Okay. Let's uh, look into this new hymn. It's uh, Jagati, again, longish hymn, only 12, yeah, 13. Do you see the projection? Yeah, you see. You start with mantra? Yes, we will start with mantra. Thank you. Om Vang me manasi pratishtheta Mano me vachi pratishthetam aviravirma edhi vedasyama ani stha shrutam me ma prahasihi anena dhitena horatran samdadhami ritam vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Tanmamavatu Tadvaktaramavatu Avatu Mam Avatu Vaktaram Avatu Vaktaram Om Shanti 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 Yajnena Vardhata Jata Veda Sam Agnim Yajadvam Habishata Nagira Samidhanam Suprayasam Suvarnaram Dyuksham Hotaram Vrijanesham Durshadam Make the fire that knows all things born to grow by your sacrifice. There is a fire inside. And to make him grow, we have to make an offering to him. We have to do the sacrifice. Worship him with thy offering and thy body and thy speech. Worship in his kindling fire in his kindling fire with whom are the strong delights the male of the sun world the priest of the call the inhabitant of heaven who sits at the chariot yoke in our battles The inhabitant of heaven, there is a footnote, or who dwells in the light. My interpretation, with your constant progress of transformation, make Agni grow. That is... Constant progress of transformation is yajna. That's my translation of yajna in this case. The one who knows all beings born. All beings, that means who are born in the body and who are born in any form, vital, mental, and even beyond. Sacrifice your offering, your body in time and space, tana, and your voice voice as an expression of consciousness sacrifice him agni bring him into action the one who is totally kindled whose delights are perfect who is of the sun world who dwells in the light of heaven who summons the gods who is seated in front of our chariot that moves forward in our battles against crookedness against enclosure vrijanesh vrijana is used as a uh, stables or the pans for the cows and horses or the enclosed space where they are kept uh, and also it is that crookedness um, 
crookedness something which is enclosing, which is not allowing the straightforward movement, which is not allowing straightforward look and knowledge or thought and word. It's always turning on to itself, holding to itself, gravitating towards itself. It's not free to fly. There is an interesting word, Suvarnaram. He translates the male of the sun world. Interestingly, that this is, a, they put big question to this word because nobody knows what it could be. Nara is the man, male, or Nri is used in the Veda as the heroic power of the soul. So this is a heroic power of the soul in the Swar world. Yeah? He is quintessential divine in the Swar world. Dhur Shadam. Dhur is that uh, X or yoke in the chariot yeah, to which the, the horses are yoked, who sits in front of our, who is a driver of our chariot, let us say, in our battles against the darkness, against crookedness. Interestingly, they don't even use um, the darkness here, but crookedness, which creates the darkness. Darkness is nothing but crooked light, yeah? light which is turned on to itself, which is not shining through, light which is enclosed like a black hole, which is pulling back to itself the light and not allowing it to shine. That is the darkness. Mm -hmm. Abhi tuva, abhi tva, nakti hushaso vavashire, agne vatsam na svasareshu, vatsam na svasareshu dhenavach, diva ived, diva ived aratih manusha yuga, kshapobha asi. Puruvara samyatah. The nights and the dawns have lowered to thee as the milk cows low towards the calf in their layers of rest. O fire of many blessings, thou art the traveler of heaven through the ages of man and thou sinnest sorry and thou shinest self gathered through his nights thou art the traveler of heaven through the ages of man beautiful yes Thou art the traveler of heaven through the ages of man, and thou shinest self-gathered through his nights. So, Naktihi Ushasach, the nights and dawns, Abhitvav, Vavashire, they call to you like, uh, like, bellowing like uh, like the cows are yes uh, um, mooing moo to the calf to come um, calling him uh, o agni like vatsa like the calf svasareshu in their own moving places dhenavach the nurturing the nourishing the feeding cows, the milk cows, yeah? the cows who want to feed the baby, they call the baby to feed, the calf is somewhere playing in the fields, 
and he has to come to mama and get a little milk. So these mamas, days and nights, want to feed him, to give him a little sustenance that he will grow. Um, days and nights, these are the periods of our constant growth. We need the light, the feeding of the light, and then accumulation of that experience into the night. Yeah? Settling down into the our into our bodies, into our unconscious life, the light has to come, the feeding has to reach into the depth of the inconscient. So we are constantly feeding the night and uh, the, by the light. And divach aratich, interesting word aratich, Shubindo translates it as a traveler, as the one who journeys, the pilgrim. The pilgrim of heaven, of the light, manusha yuga, manushani yugani, of through the um, yugas of man, through the ages of man, kshapobhasi, kind of illumining kshapach. Kshap is the night, the darkness, illumining the darkness, poruvara, the one who has many gifts. Samyatah. Hmm. Through the nights, self gathered, self controlled, or self closed darkness. Moving or illumining self closed darknesses, the one who has many gifts. I'm translating literally Samyatah. Shubindu translates self-gathered. Shyness self-gathered through his nights. So he, this interesting word, because samyatah can be translated in two ways, and both would be correct, I guess. It can be translated as Participle perfect passive was from Samyam, gathered, self gathered, says how he translates. It is Agni who is self gathered, focused totally, yes. Or it can be translated as Kshapach Samyatach. And uh, there is another interpretation of uninterrupted night. The night which is, has no interruption. And through that night, he shines Pahasi. So it's either or, both would be correct grammatically. Hmm. Shubindu chooses the other option that it is gathered, focused Agni shining through darkness. Okay, number three. Tam deva budhne rajasah sudam sasam divas prithivyoh aratim niyerire. Such a beautiful ancient language. Ratham iva vediyam shukra shochisham agnim mitram na kshitishu prasham siyam. Tam deva budhne rajasah sudam sasam divas divas prithivyo haratim nierire. The gods have sent nierire into the foundation of the middle world his great, this great worker and pilgrim of earth and of heaven, whom we must know like our chariot of white flaming light. Fire whom we must voice with our louds like a friend in the peoples.
peoples kshitishu. It is those who are dwelling, who found their bodies, embodied creatures, beings. We have to laud him, to praise him as the friend among them, as the one who Mitra, the divine consciousness present in them. All beings who took the body must have some spark behind, some presence of the divine consciousness in them, and he is to be worshipped and praised as that presence. The gods have sent or set or compelled him into the bottom of the middle space. Middle space rajas, interesting word used only in the Veda as the space between heaven and earth, literally a flaming, shining, burning energy space, pranic world. At the bottom of the pranic world, they set him there. The gods compelled him to be, to stay there. Niyerire. The one who walks between him, who the walks between heaven and earth, who is perfect in his skills. Sudamsasa. Sudamsa is the one who can do anything, change anything, build anything, perfect in building the worlds, because he is that energy who destroys the the form which cannot actually progress, any form which is not progressing is destroyed by him to create a new form. That's why he's perfect in his skills. The one we must discover, Vediyam, the one whom we must discover, like the chariot of pure flame, Agni is like Mitra among people to be praised. Number four, tam ukshamanam rajasi sue a sva adame, chandram iva so rucham havara a dadhuh, prishniyah pataram chitayantam akshabhih, patho na payum janasi ubehe ano. They have set in the crookedness, set pouring his rain like gold in the beauty of his light, set pouring like pouring his rain like gold in the beauty of his light, or like a thing of delight in his shining beauty. We are not used to this overwhelming <laughs> spiritual expression. <laughs> Our brain stops working, yes, and wondering what is, what is being said, what, uh, what does it really mean? Yeah? Mm -mm. But it means what it is. Yeah? Set pouring his rain like gold. Rain is always a grace, yeah, which is feeding, nourishing. His nourishment like gold in the beauty of his light. Or a thing of delight in the shining beauty. In the middle world and in his own home. The guardian of the dappled mother. Who awakens us to knowledge with his eyes of vision. So, the guardian of the dappled mother who awakens us to knowledge with his eyes of vision, the protector of our path along either birth. 
either birth means both births. Janasi ubhe. Interesting. So we have two births. One is physical, another is spiritual birth. You know? The birth of the soul and the birth of the body. The evolution of the soul, the psychic being, and the evolution of the body. Two evolutions. Or double evolution. They placed him in the secret place of crookedness, like glittering brilliance in his own home, in the middle space sparkling with light. The protector of the mother of the overmind, Prishni, who makes us see with his eyes of vision, protector of our path of both births. Okay, I will stop here and uh, we, we can discuss things if you want. You must. Otherwise, Vladimir, what? What? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. My question was why does he say, call the mother the Ohmite? In the Ohmite. It's me, it's me. Prishni. There are three mothers um, uh, which Shubindo kind of looks into the dappled mother. Interesting that this dappled, you know, like, like the dappled horse yeah, with different colors, many colored mother, uh, as over mind has many colors. Interesting. It's, uh, it's not by, by um, kind of okay. yeah, cho chance that this dappled mother is there. There is Aditi, the transcendental infinite consciousness bliss. And there is also Diti, who is separative consciousness by darkness. And there is this dappled, this mixture, Prishni. Um, interestingly, that even the root Prich is to mix, yeah? mix mixing, Priksha, uh, Prishni. Priksha is the mixed delight, mixed of what? Of the spirit and matter. And this mixture of spirit and matter is exactly the plane of the overmind, where this first mixture is to, is taking place, where the light is introduced into the darkness and creates this many colored, many hued creation. And there is a Thank mother you. there. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Kinshuk. Uh, sorry, my question was actually the same. What would guardian of the dappled mother mean here? How is the guardian thing coming up? Why guardian? Why to? Why why guardian? Mm -hmm. And what do you think? Oh. And in in some sense, does Agni rule the over mind, or the way the things are? are moved in the over mind. Is there some kind of thing like that? Beautiful. I believe beautiful thought, actually. Yes, he has a divine will here in this manifestation. He is in charge of all the levels till the supermind. He has to, because of him, actually, because of him, the over mind is possible. The over mind is the is one of his planes of action, the highest, most probably, in this manifestation before the supermind is manifested. So he has to guard it as all other planes. He is the guardian of all the planes. Divine guardian, divine caretaker, who looks after. Protector? Yeah, protector, guardian, yes. Like the father after the baby, you know. Could it be manifestation of the supermind from the supermind and therefore? Agni. The supramental light. 
You mean uh, the agony? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. In him, force and knowledge, power and knowledge are one and the same. Yes. He that said, means that while Agni is the child of the heaven and the earth, and yet he is the calf, he is of the of the two cows or whatever. But still he is he is in charge of the uh, of the mixed of the mixed world or the middle world or whatever. Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And he is also the one who made uh, heaven and earth parents of himself, yeah. He is the Lord who created his parents here. The child creates the parents. Hmm? Otherwise, they are not parents. Why should they be there if there is no child? <laughs> and this awakens us to knowledge with his eyes of vision. Right. Yes, we look at the world with his eyes now. We see the world how he sees the world. These are the eyes of the soul. Yes, absolutely. And of the spirit and of the supermind at the end. And we have to worship him as Mitra among the, those who took birth here as the Divine Consciousness present here. If we see every creature, every being as charged with the Divine Presence, we will start looking with his eyes, I think. But everyone, no? Good and bad and ugly. <laughs> Is this the integral vision? that um, Sri Aurobindo and the mother talk about also, that we have to develop the integral vision. I think so. Um, uh, that is the eyes of the divine will uh, in I aligning. So. Integral, how, how could we integrate and make it integral if we don't have his look? Yeah. Yes. Then yes. we would receive the good, bad and ugly separately. Yes. We yes. can't see the divine presence in everyone. Mm -hmm. It's like in the Isha Upanishad, yeah? Yastu Sarvani Bhutani, Atman Yevan Upashyati, the one who sees all the beings in himself and himself in all beings. This is the vision. Mm -hmm. Mother explains it like um, having the same attitude towards yes. everything. Right. Know. It starts Not seeing with differences, this. yes. It starts with this. Same thing, yes. Having the same attitude is just we are forcing it. I have to remember that he is also the divine. Yeah, I have to forgive. Forgiven, so you shall be forgiven. All that is a mental work, which is kind of tuning, tuning us to discover the look, which is totally natural to see the divine in everything. Uh, we, with it, without any forcing oneself to see it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but to arrive at that realization, we, a lot of work is to be done with our consciousness because there is so much blockage here. There's so much distinction made. Yes. Um, and, uh, and removing distinction is not the right way to go also. Many people think that they, if they remove the distinction, don't have discernment, this would be the thing. Yeah? So everything is the divine, I say, yeah? and I am judging everything and myself. I hate myself, but everything is the divine. And this is, uh, this is the way how uh, kind of artificially we may come to it. Yeah? White lies, oh, you're so good, you're so great. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, this is not the way to go because it's a lie. Um, the real thing is to be through discernment, to find the truth, real truth, not the, the imitating the truth, not trying to, to, to resemble or mentally impose some dogma on everything. And then 
vitally to be excited by that dogma and uh, by that self-excitement start imitating a kind of embodiment of the truth. This she is was not talking that. about true sincerity. In that passage, she talked about the integral vision. She said true sincerity is to arrange everything in its proper place and have the true integral vision. In that context, she was saying that. And it requires Viveka, it requires discernment. How would you put everything into its right place if you see everything as already? Oh, it's divine. Everything is divine. <laughs> they, they started to use this word in, in jargon, you know, divine. It's very dangerous to use words, yes, which are deeper in the flat usage or in the lower context. So they lose their power, their depth. Vladimir, that brings me to a question which is very important to me. Okay, uh, just give me a minute to... So basically, when I, I, I recite these hymns, uh, some of them, and I recite them in a very priestly manner, and uh, the words get all mixed up, and I'm not sure if I should be doing that or not doing it. For example, this particular hymn, I would recite it as Tam Budne Rajasa Sudam Sasam Divas Prithiv Vyora Ratinne Rire Ratamiva Vedyang Sukrashochi Shamagning Mitrangna Shitishu Prashanksaya. Now, this is the priestly style and this is necessary to remember, but the words do get mixed up. So, is it right or is it wrong? If you hear them, if you understand their meaning, um, if there is a part in you while reading, you can even whisper it, you can gobble it, it doesn't matter that you don't pronounce each word separately, clearly. And it matters that your consciousness while words are flowing is um, observing the flow without interfering with its own formulation. And once you understand the meaning, then the sacrifice is done. So you will feel the presence of the power, of the meaning of the mind. Power is meaning. Yeah? Uh, if meaning it does not appear, then you will have only a shadow of meaning, very little of the mantra. Yeah? You know, all what they do in Guru Kulas when they read these mantras, and especially with the Vedic accent, they have no nothing it's just a very big shadow of the meaning there is no real meaning there is no depth of understanding there is no creation of vision that you can you can't read more than one verse because it overwhelms you it stops your breathing it stops your thinking you want to stay in that meditation in that vision because this verse this poetry is so powerful uh, that you feel that even flame from within you is rising. And do you want to read next verse on the top of this verse? No, you want to stay with this. Yeah. So our reading has to be conscious, the only thing. You can read the way you like. I prefer uh, pauses. Uh, okay. Pauses in between because I need to comprehend. Comprehend without actively participating with the mind without thinking about it i need to kind of dwell on it or hold on to it and then something appears some understanding appears and that understanding connects to next understanding and once the verse is over one verse you have some sense of presence which can evolve into the vision into the knowledge, actually. Right now, I get uh, a very spotty. The meanings of some words seem to be clear in my mind, but the others just go with the flow. And I, 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 it's not a coherent meaning that comes. Some images stick. 
that's all but it's it's a spotty thing uh, that is what happens interestingly mother, uh, mother was also asked the same question how to read savitri and she says you read slowly clearly no hurry and that's it don't rush don't make sentences as we do sentences in our mind yeah, or in our common speech it's not about that i was a uh, interesting kind of exercise yesterday i was walking around i was watching this film the christian christ revolution which is very interesting i recommend on netflix it's about Christianity. It doesn't matter that it is Christianity. It's about hippie movement. And uh, I remember I loved one one song from the hippie movement of uh, old band. Yes, maybe some of you know heard about this Yes groove no? band. And they have one song. Mm, only one song I love from that band. <laughs> so many albums. Uh, and that belongs to that movement. And so I was walking when I was walking and I was singing this song to myself. And I noticed when I sing consciously every word, it hits you strongly. If you don't sing consciously, it is like a song, you know. So the, the words are, are like this. There is a time. And the time is now. And it's right for me. And it's right for me. And the time is now. There's the word. And the word is love. And it's right for me. And it's right for me. And the word is love. Now, when I make pause before and the word is, you're waiting for what is the word? You have to wait. You have to anticipate. If you don't, then the, there's a time and the time is now and it's right for me and it's right for me and the time is now and there's a word and the word is love and it's right for me and it's right for me and the word is love you don't hear it you need to really make it and then when you hear it you feel this is power the time is now and the word is love, and it's right for me. It's right for me. It hits you. It's like mantra. So you can make mantras even from the songs. You can make your present kind of aspiration from any poetry. <laughs> Consciousness has to be there. You have to be aware of what you do, what it means to you. And these Vedic verses, they're powerful. They generate, they create a new awareness. Or long forgotten one. And, and what happens if you bring the word to the tip of your tongue, but you don't actually utter it? It's also very powerful. Shobindu says even silent pronunciation in the mind is very powerful, even more powerful. It depends, you articulate and you observe. One part articulates without interference, other part observes without interference. Give it time, the meaning has to appear. And that is called Svadhyaya. Svadhyaya is these two parts. One part artist, other part observes. One part artist is earth, which is speech. Other part heaven, mind, observes. And in between them, there is this new child is born. 
experience prana raja this is the vision of the veda you know how to well, this was the beginning of the whole indian civilization swadhyaya you know you know kiri joshi some of you may know him yes yes he was uh, my mentor we, we were very close and very good friends for many years and um, he told me at the end of his life it's kind of amazing i visited him at the end of his days in the nursing home and he told me i don't know anything better than swadhyaya and swadhyaya is this you read the luminous text like veda or savitri to yourself to your own self the text which you know perfectly by heart you read it totally fresh yeah without interference of the mind observe the meaning get a new meaning new insight and that is how we evolve we can't evolve by our own we need the guidance we need someone who was who realized it like sri aurobindo or vedic rishis they lead our soul forward we can't do it ourselves it's very rare that somebody's soul can do it by itself it's impossible actually we because the world is infinite there are so many varieties and we already identified our consciousness with the material formation so we may work forever in that material form perfecting it but to get this consciousness this guidance it's not within our reach we need the guide we need the guardian and agni is the guardian <laughs> i've noticed um, uh, vladimir that when i read savitri one part is reading and the other part is standing back mm -hmm. there's a clear difference between the two Very and different. the other thing i noticed is this doesn't happen when i'm reading any other book in every other book i'm trying to mentally it's a mental exercise i'm trying to read and trying to understand it's only in savitri that this happens and i didn't notice it till you just mentioned it and i used to wonder uh, after reading savitri that there was a, it was a different experience and i didn't know how to describe the experience of reading savitri but it is exactly what you just said but it doesn't happen when i read other books not at all and that's why i can't put savitri down if you apply the same thing to other books of sri aurobindo you will have the same effect and presence uh, i must tell you because i read other books with the same Uh, approach i, I read the like divine and it flows like like butter through you you know like nourishing mm -hmm. you don't need to switch mm -hmm. on mind understanding comparing everything will appear the understanding will appear connections will appear your mind will be wondering every time oh, what a treasure every every book of sri aurobindo is of that kind yes I'll try that definitely. But only Sri Aurobindo and the mother, mother also mm -hmm. the same. Yeah, mother is different. Mother is also engaging other parts, vital and uh, even physical. But yes. Sri Aurobindo, it's it's a pure honey yes. milk. Yes. Thank this, you. And this, thank you, Vladimir. This may sound very odd, but I find. Shiro Windows books easier to read and I find mother's books quite complicated and somewhat confusing very honestly I mean this is this sounds crazy you have still some work to do <laughs> some work to do yes I understand that <laughs> thank you I I have I've been there that's why I've been there where you were when now mention it was like this for me also i thought that uh, shirobindo was just easy for me really easy incredibly easy it was like uh, really the food for the soul 
it was everything in the right place every word it's like when you read savagery and you you kind of anticipate next next phrase next thought and it comes and you are just wondering you know you knew that it will come it's on that level uh, but uh, with the mother it's always a surprise always practical new kind of a view until until you are there yeah? so you have to develop another part and so it took me a long time to really read the mother so happily as i do now now i'm looking for the practical solution i see it oh now i know <laughs> it's like this shirobindo is just feeding you yeah? feeding you full you're full after that you don't need anything but the mother will give you the practical suggestion where you have to go that's why they are both needed for this yoga i guess great thank you so i will close with mantra and we will continue next time om sarve bhavantu sukhinaha sarve santo niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu Ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 Hari Om